All right, Sci-Fi Express Lane, Jeff Carroll here. Man, listen, I do need to express myself. I was going to do a Stephen King bashing um, a video, but he pulled it through. Last night, um, I saw uh, The Boogeyman, which was a Stephen King joint, and um, Stephen King has been really letting me down over the years but I didn't really notice it until um, recently, you know, till this, this modern era of horror, you know, with movies like The Nun, uh, Paranormal Activity, um, you know, especially Malignant, and, and it showed um, what real horror can be. But I decided, you know, Stephen King pulled it through so I'm not really going to glorify him because this is still just a one shot fluke for him to have a story that really didn't depend on some magic Negro demonstrated in the green mile, some magic element, you know, some unfilled in blanks, you know, like how, you know, where to carry, get her stuff from. You know, they clean his stuff up so much in the movies. It's ridiculous. And when you read one of his books, you be like, oh, now I know, like Shining had a lot of plot holes in it but when they did Dr. Sleep they filled in a lot of those but anyway my name is uh, Jeff Carroll I'm a sci-fi writer I am a, uh, a comic book creator and a novelist right I mean a, a filmmaker sorry award-winning filmmaker award-winning writer um, and I'm waiting on that elusive um, comic book award my come on my best comic books was made during the quarantine and um, the, the uh, comic book awards that I would like to win is the Glyph, you know, like um, hieroglyphics. And that's out of uh, Philadelphia. And during the quarantine, I think for two years, I didn't really have awards the way they normally do. And this was the first year since the quarantine. So some of my, some of my best stuff was released during then. But um, I'm going to apply... My next series, I just thought about it, my Planet Kibalon, I'm going to apply it, I'm going to book four, so I'm going to apply it as a series. Anyway, that's me, right? So, um, this blog, two minutes in, I'm just telling y'all what it's about, um, is called um, Why Silence in the Theaters Are Destroying Horror Movies. Follow me. Damn. Let me say it again. Why silence in the theaters are destroying horror movies. Bam! All right? Um, and I don't think this is new for me um, in terms of talking about talking in the movies. But um, what is new in terms of this topic is me connecting it with um, horror movies and how horror movies have been struggling. You know, um... And horror movies are a really unique genre. They have variety in horror. Uh, I have six horror movies, and you know, kind of each of them are different elements. Especially, you know, showing you know me as a growing writer. They span over twenty years, um, nineteen years, but. Um, horror movies are different, you know, you've got action horror, you got the fable type horror, legend, you know, fable and legend is kind of the same thing, you got gore, you know, um, then you got fun, low budget horror, you know, there's so many types, and really horror doesn't even need a big budget, it doesn't need a big budget, you know, when they try to do big budget horror, sometimes it just messes it all up, because horror is real it's grounded it needs to be touchable it needs to come into you to for you to to get scared right um you know even when you take movies like alien it takes place quote unquote real far away um you still need to be able to personally think that you might be there right it, you don't need that in other action movies, you, you know, for Taken and 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 what's Man on Fire? Those are hot movies. You don't need to be there. You watching the story. You don't want to be in Mexico. You don't want to be in wherever it is 
or Croatia or whatever, you know, taking took place in. You don't want to be there. You don't even need to be there. Take me on the ride, right? But aliens, you need to be in that ship. You need to be on that spaceship, wherever that ship is, okay? Friday the 13th, you need to be in the closet waiting for Jason to walk by. You know what I'm saying? You need to be in the dreams with Freddy. You know, um, with the nun, you need, you're you in the room when that nun comes out. Paranormal activity, you're in that house. So, um, horror is like that, right? Because you got to be scared. You're not just scared for the person. Oh my God, I felt like it could have hit me. You know, scratch me. Oh, all those things. You need to be in there. So, how does talking um, positively affect um, movies and horror movies? Horror movies mostly because I say this. They usually are, they're probably the lowest budget of movies of all genres. Definitely lower than sci-fi and superhero movies. We already know that. Action. Only other ones can be lower or as low is probably um, drama and done the way Tyler Perry does them. Other than that, horror movies is lower, cheaper than, you know, comedy sometimes you can have expensive, like comedy is an element that can go into a lot of ones. Look at 48 Hours, Beverly Hills Cop, those have amazing action scenes, but it was a comedy, right? And he was dying laughing, it was straight funny. Um, they haven't really done a good space comedy, although I do like um, 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 Pluto Nash with Eddie Murphy. Y'all might not like it, but I like it. All right, especially now when a lot of us are into sci-fi, and you, you know, more people get the jokes. You know what I'm saying? Um, so horror needs an audience, right? So when I was watching um, the Boogeyman last night, I was, you know, fighting the urge to keep quiet. Like, oh, I know this chick ain't gonna do this. Oh my God, and I'm not trying to tell you the movie because it came out um, last night. So I'm not trying to tell you. Uh, maybe I'll do something later, you know, next week because I usually give it the weekend before I post anything or probably talk about it. But yo, so all through the movie, I'm fighting the urge like, if you would have just done this, how about you answer the phone? They don't want to answer, answer the phone. You know, like I called the therapist a therapist. And, and now the title is so hot, I'm putting it out, uh, but I already wrote um, a fingernail story this morning um, called, you know, something with the therapist in it. And um, I can't tell you anything more than that. You know, it's, you know, that's the thing about talking in the movies. You're, the, the movie is the setup and your audience comments are the punchlines. And they come, and when it when it works, they coming from all over the place. So most people, let's debunk this myth, right? Most people think um, talking in the movies is, yo, James, what time the girls coming over? You know, or hey, mommy, I'm out with the friend. No, that's talking. Talking in the movies is when you say, yo, don't go down there. Oh, look at this chick. What the? You know what I'm saying? Oh, of course, of course, of course they're not going to do that. You know, it's responding comments to the movie, right? They're responding. And unfortunately, yes, people that like silence, you're going to miss a line or two. You're going to miss. You're going to either miss it through the comment or you're going to miss it through the extra laugh. Look, I laughed at a scene out loud in the movie last night. It made other people laugh in the movie. What did that tell me? That told me that people did find it funny, but they were scared to react. What? How are you paid your money? If you laugh and you find it's funny, laugh. Don't be holding back your laughter because you feel it's going to take away from somebody else's enjoyment of the of the picture. You know, my son, he's all proper. He, you know, I snuck in the uh, uh, seven movies one one time growing up in high school. It was a seven plex and I saw all seven movies. And um, what do you call it? He is is, is scared to, to sneak in one, right? You know, um, and I'm not even advocating that, but 
yo, that's what I did. That's, you know, if there was ever a law-breaking element in my life, it was sneaking in the movies. All right? Yes, I'm guilty of that. There was a time that they caught me sneaking in the movies, and I was banned from the movie theater. You know, um, there was a little lady work at the Seven Plex on Route 4, and she reminded us of the lady in Poltergeist. You know, the little Carolyn, that lady. So she reminded us of that. She caught me one time sneaking in the movies and was like, yo, never. You know, but fortunately, there were so many kids, so many black people, and there was other movie theaters that I was able to go away from that movie theater for a while. And then by the time I came back, I probably looked different. I was a little older. And, you know, I would have stubs, you know. And that was the other thing, you know, when you snuck in a the movie theater, you quick find a stub on the floor and, you know, because people would drop their stubs and show them a stub. And they'd be like, damn, you got a stub. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't have nothing else on it. But you better be an adult if it's got an adult ticket or, or youth if you find a youth ticket. The youth really don't throw their tickets away. So anyway, um, my son is like that, right? So all through the movie, he's like, oh, my God, if I'm laughing, if, I, if I'm talking, I might be whispering something to him. You know, he's laughing because he's a comedian and then he may, you know, get upset and then try to tell me a joke back or whatever. But we whispering, you know, and it's so quiet in there that I went to, um, to the bathroom because I'm old. And when I came, you know, while I was walking to the thing, I could damn near hear people eating popcorn. And I was like, God, damn, that's real quiet. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about ever having a whole conversation on in the movie theater you know what i'm saying that's why you do this get off of my foot nah that's annoying but what i am saying and, and, and making jokes for the whole movie but i'm saying if you got a joke that's funnier than the movie if somebody tells a joke that's funnier than the movie what the heck is the problem that means the movie got you know you're improving on the movie now sure there's going to be audience comedians that are not as funny as the movie, no doubt. And that can be annoying, but just like going to your comedy club, you know, your comedian ain't hitting every joke. Sheesh. You know, the, the, the rapid fire comedians like Shang and Michael Blackson, they're going to give you an off joke every once, every once in a while. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, um, it ain't going to be every pow, 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 you know what I'm saying, but those times that audience hit you, oh my God, because there's nothing, mind you, nothing worse than um, going to a movie, paying your money, getting your $35 popcorn, right, and um, what do you call it, um, it being corny, it being corny. That is the most irritating thing. I know for me it is, right? Um, so when I went to see The Boogeyman, first of all, I was already um, prepared for a Stephen King, what I call like letdown or mystery. You know, Stephen King is notorious with having um, movies that, um, or stories. I've read his books. I've, I've watched his movies, right? With, you know, with big mystery plot holes. And I think he uses those mystery plot holes strategically to build suspense or to suspend reality, right? And I get it, I get it, I just don't like it. I wanna know where Carrie got her powers from, I wanna know how she's able to do this and that, I wanna know how the mother was able to, you know, have it be some ghost that gets into Carrie, something. There was plot holes in The Shining, as much as we love The Shining, right? When you read the book, there's elements in there that's, that, that's left unfinished. And when you watch the movie Dr. Um, Sleep, it fills in all of those blanks. Now you know what they were chasing from and going towards. Um, what's the other one? Um, the Green Mile. The, he's the birthplace of the effing uh, Magic Negro. The Magic Negro is a Stephen King plot hole. How the hell this black guy get on, you know, uh, it's magic number one. And then he's so stupid, you think he's a Negro. So he's the one that gave birth to the Magic Negro. Anyway, 
Um, uh, talking in the movies to me saves the movies. Um, if you don't understand, I think Mystery Science Theater was a, is a good place to go and check out. Um, they show old movies and then they talk over them and they make jokes and they bring that whole um, art form to life. I have been wanting to release a talking in the movies version of one of my movies and um, Tubi came and, and Tubi just took um, my movies so um, and put them up as they were. So I'm not complaining on that. But I'm going to find a way to see if my distributor will be open to me um, re-releasing -re some of my movies with a talking um, 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 track um, to it. And I was thinking of, you know, having people over the house and just screening one of my movies and just taping their comments. So I may go back to doing that, um, especially now that I know how to edit and bring two tracks, bring two audio tracks together. Never knew how to do that before. Crazy, but I did. Anyway, um, that's where I'm at. All right. Um, I think talking in the movies is a beautiful art form. And I'm sorry. I think it's taken away from good movies or medium movies that can bring an audience a good time. Because the goal isn't for the movie to be great. If the movie's not able to entertain you, do a Fast and Furious then you need to get your money's worth. And the audience participating, laughing, screaming, giving some daggone reaction can save a medium movie and make a bad movie medium. Make a medium movie good. I've seen it happen where the movies were so entertaining because of the audience, people thought they were good. And then when they watch them again, they'd be like, damn, this was corny. It happened to me with The Exorcist, you know? But anyway, I'm talking too long. I'm out. Uh, like, subscribe, share, and comment. Peace.